Hi guys, Paul here from PA Brew News, back in the dungeon again, just got home from work. Uh, absolute chaos, the pandemic has hit home in uh, the backwoods of Pennsylvania, of course it was a statewide thing, commonwealth-wide thing. So of course schools are going to be closed the next two weeks, there's no toilet paper on the thing, the grocery stores are being ravaged, people are being complete alarmist retards as usual, basically showing that they should actually be wiped out by a play because they can't function without they're all their sheep and they're idiots and they blah 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 you know i hate i hate people i hate people anyway let's get into this beer right here from goose island this was picked up my candle went out my candle went out i got i picked this one up actually i was uh actually going for a completely different beer. I was going for some, um, some, so, uh, some, what was it? Von Stefanus Kobinian, which is their double box. And they're from 2013. That's crazy. On the shelf, three bucks a bottle. You know, so I went over, over to grab more of those. And lo and behold, in a the corner, there was a 2019 Cafe de Olo Stout which is a coffee-infused uh, bourbon barrel aged imperial stout from Goose Island. So didn't expect to see that. It was 20 bucks. I understand it's a little bit uh, pricey. I do feel it's pricey anyway. But it is over 13% alcohol by volume. It is a rare release. Quotations. We're just going to do that. It's something I didn't ever think I'd see. So I picked it up. 20 bucks a bottle. I believe they had two. I did, as I said, I didn't go crazy. I didn't buy both. Um, so... I'm going to go back to see if they have more of those Corbinians, and if I do enjoy this, and there's another one still sitting on the shelf, I will pick it up. Listening to Midnight, John Russo's Midnight right now. We were going to do the Maniacs Meet podcast last night, but I got a call from Josh that he woke up throwing up, feeling very sick. Uh, obviously, in this day and age, especially what just happened, what is happening around America, the world, not just America, the world. Uh, the schools being shut, the things this, just randomly waking up and being violently ill is definitely something to be concerned of. I do agree. Apparently, if you have a good, a generally healthy demeanor, a good immune system, it's like the flu. It'll kick your ass for a few days and it'll go away. Uh, that's what someone told me. Whatever. I don't know. I have no idea. I don't care. I don't care. All I know is if I get it, I get it. But if you are susceptible in any way, make sure you're taking your airborne vitamins and all that stuff. Keep healthy, stay healthy, drink good beer, that whole deal. So here we go. Maniacs Meat Podcast may be over. Who knows? He may be dead. You know, here's looking for it. Here's hoping. Okay, up to light. It poured with a very caramel hue in, in, the, in the stream, I can see. Very nice murky brown sticking here on the sides. Caramel hues little bit of I mean alcohol legs sticking like a mofo let's see I think it was 13 13.5 percent alcohol by volume so we're almost pushing the 14 level there you go there's kittens meowing upstairs it's chaos okay nice cocoa kind of khaki baker's chocolate kind of covered head right there big bubbles big bubbles surprisingly nice head though at a 13.5 percent beer for sure alcohol legs Blankets and sheets of alcohol legs are going to be nestling, nestling me in for the night, the morning. I sleep during the day, of course. A little rind of, of a caramel hue at the pinnacle of the glass. Very small one, though. Let's get some aroma. There might be coffee in this. Cheers. Man, that smells so good. It really does. It's Baker's dark chocolate, that, that kind of quality. Nice caramel, peppery bourbon. That dark, it almost smells like dark chocolate and, and walnuts kind of mixing together, you know what I mean? If you ever get those nut clusters, like the dark dark chocolate version of it, the aroma is coming off this is really nice. Nice walnut husk, smoky, char, peppery, nutty coffee. Mm, very good. It smells fantastic. Let's get into it. Cheers. I 
I'm still tasting stuff. That was a ride. One more, cheers. I don't know if you can hear a kitten. I can hear a kitten. Oh my God, there's layers and layers and layers and layers and sticky and layers and sticky. The overall body's a bit thin, but uh, low size of, of a full mouthfeel, but the mouthfeel is oily and sticky and lingers and allows that to like, see if this was, if, if the, I don't know, it's the lower side of a, of a full body touching the medium side of a full body, but it's got this pillowiness and oiliness to the mouthfeel that just lets it linger and linger and linger and linger, you know? It was nice, easy drink and smooth beer, but then, and it's stupidly drinkable for 13.5, but just lingering, tons, tons, tons of caramels and chocolates and, 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 and a little char, a little smoke, a little of that nutty coffee coming through as well. Walnut husk, nice, bright, caramel, peppery bourbon kind of wafting around the palate, bitey, peppery, bitey, beautiful. Oh my goodness. Oh, wow. Wow. This is the best Goose Island I've ever had. I've had a couple different variations of, of the Goose, you know, the Bourbon County Brown Stout over the years. This is delicious. This is delicious. Yeah, you can't see it. Right. Yeah, it's really, really good. The layers of different like toffee brown sugar, toffee, molasses, caramel, those little tonalities wafting back and forth, back and forth, almost like a, almost like a sticky toffee pudding, uh, kind of dessert kind of quality to this beer too, it is, it is nuts, it is, del it's delectable, it's savory, I love the fact that too, it's not just a regular imperial stout, the, the, the layers of toffee, brown sugar, caramel, even nuances of the molasses that I'm getting right now is just stupid. It's delicious. It is, it is a dessert. It really is dessert. And not just straight up dark chocolate, milk chocolate, kind of like devil's food cake. This has layers of that sticky toffee pudding kind of quality to it as well. There's a soft sweetness in there, like a vanilla as well. Almost, they're almost shot in my head a little bit of that cowtail candy kind of a thing. That's good beer. It's good beer. It's good beer. Yeah, yeah, it's good beer. Yeah. Pour it, out. it pours so light though, you can definitely see through it. And it's got a lot of effervescent. It's a lively beer. It's definitely not a dead beer. It's not dead in the bottle. I mean, it's got some life to it. Sorry, I'm, I'm just being too quiet. I'm just enjoying the damn beer. It's one of those kind of things. It's just so beautiful caramels, sweet, baker's chocolate, milk chocolate, dark chocolate. You have those those nice walnut husk qualities. You have that smokiness. You have that caramel peppery bourbon. You have the different layers of toffee, brown sugar, brown red tonalities. You have all those caramels. You got a kitten that just won't shut the fuck up upstairs. And it's just, it's really, really good. It is a really good beer. Mm. Right now, I haven't had one in a long time. I don't give them out very often. But we're going to talk about some big old Imperial Stouts. We're going to talk about some Bourbon County brand Imperial Stouts. This is the best one I ever had. And I don't really do the quarter hits, the, the quarter points too much. So I'm going to round this bitch up to a 10. I really enjoy this beer. And if I see it again... 
even though it's a tad bit thin on the body overall, but the mouthfeel pegs up to it, the qualities, the, the, the tasting notes that I'm getting, the savoriness of this beer, the enjoyability of this beer, the drinkability of this beer, I'm knocking this bitch up to a 10. So this has been Paul Bear Brew News. Cheers. <laughs>